If you or someone you love is pregnant, congratulations, that's a wonderful blessing. But you may have some questions, like, what if the mom and baby's blood types are different? Is that a worry? Should I be concerned? Let's get into the details of that today. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're talking about if mother's blood and baby's blood are different or incompatible. So what I've got here, I've got a picture that I drew very poorly of a mother with a great like 90s hairstyle um, with a baby inside attached to umbilical cord to the placenta. You've probably heard of these terms before, right? And if you zoom in on that space between mother's blood in the placenta and baby's blood inside their body, you will see the placental cord. And as you can see, that placental cord is made of some cells. I believe they're called syncytia trophoblasts. Big word, right? Makes you sound smart. And these cells basically separate out mother's blood from baby's blood. Now, this may be concerning to you because you know that mother's blood has all these nutrients, things like oxygen, things like glucose, amino acids, and other nutrients that you've probably heard of before that we need to get to baby, right? Well, in reality, all of these things are small enough to actually leak out of mother's blood and get to baby. So we can nourish baby, and we can also take some of the waste from baby, like their CO2 and other waste products, and they will flow out the same way into mother's blood to be filtered out by mother's kidneys, as well as breathed out by mother in terms of the CO2. So that's all well and good, but what you notice is that the blood cells do not mix. Those stay separate mom's blood cells in mom's blood and baby's blood cells in baby's blood. And that's really important because you see on here, I've got mother's blood, red blood cells, with no antigens. Now what antigens are, are kind of like little flags on the outside of blood cells, and there's none on mother. So therefore she is determined to be O negative blood type. And if you need to learn more about blood types, please watch this video here. But for now, stick around. We've got O negative mother blood, but then if you look at baby, baby's got some cool flags here, right? So baby's got some allegiances. We've got an A antigen here, a little A flag, and we've also got a little plus uh, flag as well. So therefore, baby, as you could probably guess, is A positive. Now, for the first pregnancy, this isn't a problem because babies and mom's blood don't mix. But when the mother gives birth to baby, sometimes there's some hemorrhaging, some bleeding, right? So during childbirth, we'll imagine that these blood vessels are just kind of popping off, and then some of baby's blood can kind of mix into mom's, and maybe some of mom's can mix into baby's. Not much, but just enough. So this is what happens here. When baby's blood cell gets into mom and presents those new antigens to mom, you can imagine that mother's body has never seen these things before inside her system. So what will actually happen is a process called sensitization, which often occurs after birth when baby's blood gets mixed into mom's blood and they're incompatible. So what happens here is mom begins producing things called antibodies. So mom's gonna start producing these things called antibodies. We'll draw them in a second. And they're going to basically fight against these foreign antigens is what they're called, that A from baby and the positive from baby. So what mom will have now in her bloodstream, obviously this baby has now been birthed, right? Living the dream, right? Crying, pooping, sleeping, doing all the wonderful things. But mom, inside her bloodstream, something has changed. Let me draw what has changed. Now, mom has these weird little things floating around in her bloodstream, and these are the antibodies. So this one is the antibody for that antigen A. Because as you can see, it would fit nicely onto A and start attacking it, right? And she also has the antibody for that positive. Which, by the way, that positive is also called the RH factor. But we just call it the plus. So we have an antibody for the RH factor, the plus. We've got an antibody for the A antigen, and both of these, if they got the chance, would bind to these blood cells from the previous baby and start attacking them. Now that's okay right now because mother doesn't have a baby inside of her womb, but what if on her second pregnancy, she has another baby, placenta is formed, and we'll say that baby number two has the same exact blood type as baby number one. So baby number two as well is A positive. Now you may be wondering how the heck is this baby A positive when mom was O negative? Well, these must have come from the dad, so it's the dad's fault. And I believe you can learn more about that here. So baby number two is A positive, and as you can see, the blood cells still don't mix. So the blood cells aren't mixing, that's not a problem, right? 
But here is the problem. Now, mother's antibodies are floating freely around in her bloodstream. And just like I said earlier, how these glucose and nutrients and wastes can go in and out, so can this RH factor antibody. It can squeeze through and find its way into baby's bloodstream. And that's a problem because now this antibody will attach, I'm going to draw it bigger, will attach to this positive antigen on all of baby's blood cells. And when this happens, that could actually start to kill baby's blood cells. It will coagulate them, basically stick them together, and render baby's blood nearly useless. That is called HDN, the hemolytic disease of the newborn. And that is not good. We do not want that to happen. So luckily, scientists have figured out how to prevent this from happening. They give a pregnant mother something called a Rogam shot. And what a Rogam shot does is it gives you a molecule, I'll just say that looks something like this, just like a big old blocked line. And those blocked lines can stick to that RH factor from baby. So now what that Rogam shot will do, instead of the antibodies binding to it, I'm going to erase all these. Now the Rogam shot will attach to them very, very small and just block their antigen. Now this Rogam molecule doesn't bother baby's blood cell. It doesn't coagulate it or cause this HDN at all. What it does is it prevents these antibodies from mom from binding. So when that antibody tries to come in and attach, it gets blocked. So therefore, baby's blood cells will be just fine because we took that Rogam shot. Now, that being said, it's best clinical practice lately to just give Rogam shot on the first pregnancy, just in case, because if mother has some sort of hemorrhage where the blood mixes, mom could make those antibodies and it could start attacking baby. So we, generally speaking, just give them on the first pregnancy now, where it used to be just the second one. Now, you may be asking a second question, like, Mr. J, you missed this. Why did I not mention the anti-A antibodies? Why did I not mention these crossing over here to affect the A antigens from baby? Well, I drew them a certain way for a reason. You see how big these antibodies are for A? They are too big to cross the placental wall. So therefore, even if it tried, it would get stuck. It wouldn't be able to get out of mother's bloodstream into baby. So in fact, we don't worry about these antibodies for A, nor would we worry about antibodies for B. Because the antibodies that would be made would just be too big to actually get into baby's bloodstream. So we don't worry about them at all. The one pesky one we have to worry about is that RH factor, that plus, okay? Because the antibody for it is small enough to squeak into baby's bloodstream. Now, there's one last thing I need to teach you before I go, but if this has been helpful so far, please consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I make a lot more videos like this, making difficult concepts really simple on a diagram. Now, what I wanna tell you is this could happen in the reverse, right? So what if instead of mom's bloodstream being here, what if this was actually baby's bloodstream? And what if this bloodstream was actually mom's bloodstream? All right, let your brain recalibrate, right? Well, in this case, now mom would actually be having the issues from baby. Baby could make these antibodies and antibodies could actually affect mother. So it's equally as important, even if the mom and the baby's blood types are switched like that, to take that Rogam shot to prevent issues for mother as well.